are you feeling? This is, sorry, this is a closed set. You can't, <laughs> you can't film here. This is Ron Clifford. He has been a friend and more importantly, a mentor to me on my creative journey. Recently, I've had a chance to sit down with Ron and talk a little bit about that journey. So let's jump in and have a discussion with the one, the only, Ron Clifford. There, got it. Easton, perfect. Oh, it's going to be hard to look at the back of that. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Dave here, and I am talking with my mentor, uh, Ron Clifford. Ron, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. As you can see, we were sitting in the rain. The pool's back there that Dave was in, but yeah, it's a rainy day. It is a rainy day. We've been uh, gathering with a bunch of friends post-COVID, uh, doing some uh, photography shots, um, and Ron has been my mentor for photography. He uh, took me from the uh, uh, layman uh, taking shots randomly into uh, more of the artistic realm, um, which has been fantastic. So thank you very much for your help. I've, my pleasure. It's been a real journey. It's been actually a real pleasure to watch you go from a snap shooter to a really quite established in your field. It's been amazing to see that over the last few years. Well, thank you. So uh, one of the things that got me um, into the photography from that journey has been uh, something that you have a catchphrase with. Uh, what, what is that catchphrase that you have? It's do what you can't help but do. Do what you can't help but do. Um, and can you just describe what that means to you? Yeah, so do what you can't help but do is, and, and that doesn't mean, well, I can't help but sit on the couch and watch television. That's not what that phrase means. It's in a creative pursuit, we're drawn to very specific things. So when I say do what you can't help but do, I tell people, for me, that is to capture beauty and character in the people I meet and the places I travel to. So two of the things I specialize in are taking portraits of people and portraits of nature and then helping others do the same. And so that's what led to me becoming a mentor. So when you ask me, what does it mean to do what I can't help but do? And that's to photograph the world around me and the people in it and to mentor others to do that as well. Right. Um, I know uh, when I started with, with you doing the mentoring stuff, um, I was uh, masquerading as a landscape photographer. That's right, yeah. Um, and I think I got decently good at it, but that wasn't really my passion. Yeah. Um, and I recall you gave a lecture, um, a video lecture, um, and there were a picture you have of two swans. Yes, yes. Um, and in that lecture, you uh, kind of went for this shot that you said you were going to pretty much just bin. Um, you didn't think you didn't think it led up to your standards, but slowly over little periods of time, just little edits here and there, you built up an image that's really quite a masterpiece and one of your more successful images, at least social media view wise. Social media wise, it was it was a massive image for me, one of my most viral images, and it had been viewed. Google picked it up, and uh, I think it had been viewed over a billion times online. It was it was uh, it's crazy, very crazy because they can track the number of times people view it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, that, I say, I always say that reminds me of a story. That's the story I'll, I'll tell is the way I got that image. I was, I, w I went to this little place in the fall, hoping to get some fall colors. And we went early in the morning. And as we walked down toward the lake in this little bay, I had my camera on a tripod and I had my telephoto lens on, but I didn't have it set up to shoot yet. It was still on a previous day settings. Right. And these two swans were in this bay and, um, I really quickly swung my tripod around. It wasn't even open, it was down low, and I put it down low on the ground, and I sat down, and I, 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 I lined it up, I got them in focus, and I shot three shots, and I realized it was set at a 30th of a second. And uh, so my, my image, first of all, wasn't completely sharp, and in my mind, it was one of those shots that the sun was shining through the fog, and the colors were in the background, and the swans were swimming. I think there was even hearts in the air, I don't know, the angels were singing. And when I got home and I looked at the image, it was flat, it was crooked, there was no color, it was out of focus. And I thought, well, I was ready to delete the image. And I gave myself a challenge, and this was what the presentation was about. I, I, I come from a photo restoration, retouching art background, and I said, well, I'm going to give myself a challenge to, in Lightroom alone, this is before CC, back in maybe four or five or six, whatever, I'm going to edit this image just in Lightroom and see what I can do with it. And I created this long panorama and I, I 
I had addressed it like a painting by adding light here and contrast and color and creating that light that I saw in my mind, creating the color I saw in my mind by drawing out the colors that were actually in the raw file. I just hadn't really brought them out. Right. And so I ended up creating what became a signature image. And so, yeah, do yeah. what you can't help but do. Yeah, um, for me, um, because I do toy photography, it, I always strive to take the toys and try to make them more realistic yeah. than they actually are because they're just chunks of plastic. I try to add to it. Um, and I think when you gave that talk, it clued into me that I controlled both the horizontal and the vertical and I could add those elements to it. I, yeah. I didn't have to just depend on what the camera captured. I could add to it. Um, and that really got me going farther than I did. And that, that was really the point where I decided I can really take the toy stuff to the next level because that's really what I can't help but do is tell stories through that. Um, and that's the thing that kind of got me from uh, kind of hiding it in the corner of my mind. I wasn't really comfortable bringing it to the world. Yeah. Um, at that point in time, I just decided, you know what, this is really what I'm going to do. So if I'm going to, I'm going to master something and spend time becoming better at it. That's the thing. You're that's gonna the do. thing I am going to do. I, I remember you sharing with me in a in a critique one day an image where you were just doing some tabletop setup and you were struggling with the initial lighting. And I remember you figuring out how to, I don't know what the powder was that you finally started blowing, but maybe it was, Debbie was blowing, yeah, was flower, yeah, your wife yeah. was blowing flour to create this this scene. And uh, it was like, yeah, you're, you're, you're doing it. You're getting to the next level. You're starting to figure out how to make these things look real. And I just remember that you shared the behind the scenes and you shared the shot and we went over it and you wondered, was it enough, not enough? What can right. we do with the image? I, I, yeah, just, I remember it so distinctly in my mind. Um, yeah. So one of, the, one of the other things that I've really noticed about you, um, one of the things you can't help but do is teach. Yeah. Um, no matter where you go, um, that I've ever been with you and you have a camera in your hand, not only are you fully engaged in your own art, yeah. but you always are open to give timely, well thought advice to the people around you that are also doing that. What does teaching like that mean to you? Um, teaching and what it means to me, it has to do with do what you can't help but do. So, so not only am I a creative, I love to invest in the success of others in something that always happens is when I'm around somebody who has a deep desire to learn and I have a skill to share, I can't help but share it. Right. And so, um, I don't know when the transition happened specifically because I've always had that in my nature, but part of my journey was overcoming a mental health issue. And while I was overcoming that mental health issue and deciding what direction my life was going to take, my wife came to me and she said, "Hun, when were you happy? Do you remember when you were last really happy? And I said, right away, when I was teaching, when I was photographing and when I was retouching. And then she looked at me and she said, well then, that's what you have to do. And that's what sort of birthed this next season that I'm in now of my life. This goes back many years ago, but it's what led me to decide to lean into being an educator and mentor instead of just the picture maker. And right. Yeah, that's where, I, that's where I'm at now. I do a lot of mentoring. I do a lot of educating. I still do a lot of shooting, but it's, it's a balance. Right, yeah. And also underlines the value of having a... Your, your life partner support you. Um, I know I have that since yeah. sounds like you, your wife. Um. Yeah, I, um, you know, I'll get all teared up talking about it, but um, having support systems in your life as a creative is very important. And I've met a lot of people who are very creative that don't have those support systems. And, and my advice to you, if you're watching, you don't feel you have those support systems, is seek them out uh, with the help of a mentor, like a creative mentor, a business mentor, uh, maybe online education or in-person education or seek out other creatives like we met on the Google Plus platform at right. the time, but you could use whatever platform. Find the groups that are encouraging so that if you don't have those people right beside you in life, they're still there. You just have to dig a little harder for them. And so uh, I would encourage you to find the groups or people that encourage you on that path. It's great advice, um, yeah. as always, from coming from... The, the man, the Ron, uh, the Von Ron, as I like to call him. Um, uh, are you still doing the, uh, trying to get your mentoring thing going? 
Yeah, so I do still run a mentorship platform and um, I open it up periodically to new members. It's not an all the time sign up. But if you're interested in one to one mentoring or group mentoring, go to ronclifford.com forward slash mentoring and okay. you can sign up to a, a list there to be informed when we open that up again. All right, that sounds great. Um, so, um, uh, it's been great chatting with you for a little bit, um, yeah. and I must say you've definitely been a big influence in my own creative life, and I, I'm very appreciative of that. Um, so, uh, like I said, if you want to get hear more, or see more of Ron's work, uh, go to uh, his website, ronclifford.com, um, and check him out on the social medias. Um, he's a great guy and a good person to uh, keep in your feeds. Yeah. So, thanks, Ron. Thanks for the interview, Dave. Hey. Yeah, talk to you.